what we can see is that there are more passages that teach us this principle. And to learn and to grow to deny self is really to grow in heart, in soul, and in character. It has so much to do with us as a person to the degree that we're able to get control of self. So, another thing to think about too is that this is one quality that we can use every moment of every day in every place. So that's the broad application that we need to consider as we talk and as we study about this subject. Let's look at the definition of what we're talking about when we talk about deny self or self-denial. First of all, there's different words that are used in the New Testament. Basically, there's three. They're different in spelling, but they're the same as far as meaning. They're the same as far as the concept that's involved in denying or controlling ourselves. Jesus used the phrase deny himself. We saw that as we started our study in Mark chapter 8 and verse 34. Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. So that's the phrase that we are first introduced to in our study. The King James, or the New King James, I'm sorry, uses the word self-control in 2 Peter 1, 6, and in Titus 1 and verse 8. What I've done is quoted from the King James. Um, Tim, read the 2 Peter 1, 6. And to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness. Of course, we know the context here is add diligently to your faith and then the things that are listed. And what's listed among that list is temperance. Again, the New King James says self-control. The King James uses the word temperance. The other verse is Titus, chapter 1 and verse 8, Bill. All right, we know the context here is talking about the qualification of bishops or the qualification of elders. In addition to the other things that are said, they are to be temperate. That is in the King James. The New King James says self-control. And then there's that word temperance or temperate that is used in the King James, as we saw it in 2 Peter 1 and verse 6, but then there's 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 25, Brother Matthews. And every man, pardon, and every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corrupted claim, but we an incorruptible. All right. Again, the context here is concerning competition, race. The Hebrew writer talks about it. And of course, we know oftentimes our lives as Christians are depicted as the fact that we are in a race. We're running toward a prize, a finish line, heaven. But in doing that and in living the life that we live for however many years that we are on this earth, there are certain things that are comparable to an athlete that certainly compares to us spiritually. And one of them is temperate. Athletes use a exercise temperance, temperance in their diet, temperance in their activities, temperance in almost every aspect, every phase of their life. And truly that follows with being a Christian. 
There's no phase of our lives that doesn't come under the heading of being a Christian. Whether it's family, whether it's work, or you name it. There's no relationship in this life that we have or that we are in. But what being a Christian doesn't affect. And there are things that we need to exercise, and we can only exercise those things if we are being temperate, manifesting temperance, self-control in those things. And then, of course, uh, Titus chapter 2 and verse 2. Shane? That the age of men be sober, brave, temperate, sound of faith, and charity, and patience. All right. Here's talking about the aged men. They are to be temperate, along with the other things. So these are the three words we see. Deny self, or deny himself, self-control, and temperate. Three words, but they all mean the same thing. They're all having to do with deny self. So let's look at them individually. What Jesus used in Mark 8 to deny self. It means to forget oneself. Now think about that. Forget yourself. To deny self is to forget you. Forget you of all people. <laughs> but that, that's what deny self is. You forget self. You lose sight of oneself and of one's own interest. And that's from Thayer on page 54. So when you look at that definition, what we're seeing is that literally to deny self means to say no to yourself. And when you think about it like that, it's hard to say no to anybody else, it's hard to tell anybody no. But who is it the hardest to tell no to? Yourself. So see, we're understanding hopefully why we're talking about a subject here that is of extreme importance. And yet, it's, it's, a, it's extremely difficult. The word temperance that's a word that means, again, they would cause it self-government. Self-government. The idea of government, according to what Strong says in his concordance, is it comes from a word that means to be strong in a thing that is masterful. So when you consider failure and you consider Strong's definition, what we come away with is the conclusion that temperance, denying self, means to get dominion over yourself. Get the power over yourself. Get strength over yourself to control. That's what dominion is all about. That's what power is all about, is to control. That's what strength is all about, is to, for control. But we're not talking about anybody else except self. Getting dominion, getting power, getting strength over ourself. And so, temperance means to have power or dominion over oneself. And another way of saying it is it's the ability to get a grip on yourself. <laughs> I guess that's the best way of putting it in, in simple terms. Get a grip on yourself. That's the idea of denying self, temperance. And two, it's been suggested that there are four states of man in reference to this battle. And really that's what it is. It's a struggle that each one of us needs to be engaged in. 
But there's been suggested that there are four states of man with reference to the battle between reason and passion. In other words, using reasoning, our intellect, and what stands opposite of that is passion. And what we mean by passion is feelings. We mean, uh, in addition to something, that we're talking about emotions when we talk about passions. So we got reason on one side that we, we, we deal with, but then we've got our emotions. We've got our feelings on the other side. And here's what those four areas or four states that mankind might find themselves in. One is perfect temperance. That's perfect self-control. You see, this is where reason is ruling over passion. It's all reason. Completely able to subdue, to overcome desires, feelings, emotions. And in this case, the fight is won. I mean, if you have complete, perfect, total submission, control of yourself, the battle is won. Anybody in here like that? No, I'm afraid I'm not. Then the second thing is the very opposite end of the first one, and that is unbridled lust. This is where passion rules over reason. It's everything to do with the feelings. It's everything to do with the desires. It's everything to do with the emotions, nothing to do with reason. I hope none of us are like this. That seems to be more and more the direction the world's taken. But these are the two extremes that we're seeing. Totally reason, no emotions, on the other hand, totally emotions, no reason in at all. Now in between these two states, this is where the battle within ourselves takes place. And that is what's labeled as incontinence. This is where reason fights but passion wins, it prevails. You know, we, we're in there, we, we know, so we, we're still aware of the reasonings that we need to have, but in the end, our feelings, our emotions, our desires win out. So the battle's on. And at this particular moment, Reasoning is losing. And then there is self-control. And this is where passion fights against reason, but reason prevails. And so the battle is still on, but at the moment, reasoning is winning. So really, aren't these last two things that we see, does that not pretty well sum up our lives? As long as we're letting reasoning, what we know God's word teaches, we're, we're doing fine. We're, we're staying the straight and the narrow. But then there's those situations if we're not careful that we let our feelings, we let our emotions, we let our desires come more into play. We know, what, we know what the scriptures teach. We know what God's word wants. We know what he wants. But here's a situation where it 
our feelings are just so strong. And when we sin, then we've allowed feelings, desires, emotions to win out over reasoning. There's a passage back up there in talking about uh, incontinence. Some of it, somebody turn over to 2 Timothy 2. <clears throat> I'm sorry, 2 Timothy 3. This isn't in the paper and it's not on the screen either. 2 Timothy 3. And uh, have you got it, Rex? Read verse 3. 2 Timothy 3 3. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fears, despisers of those that are good. So see, there's a word, incontinent. This is reading from the King James. So again, we're seeing that this is when we let emotions, we let passion win out over reason. It's not that we don't know, but our emotions has swayed us. And that's what happens to every Christian that sins. It's not a matter of not knowing what God's Word teaches. It's not a matter of not knowing what God wants. But due to the circumstances, due to the situation, due to the things, due to the people that are involved, it's so easy to allow our passions, our desires, our feelings, our emotions get the best of us. And the result is, we at, at that moment, we have lost the self-control that we need to, to always have. We, we were not strong enough, willing enough to deny self. Well, yes. First Corinthians 7, in the marriage relationship mentions that Satan tempts you not for your incontinence. That's that a good same practical problem yeah. as it relates to appreciate that. First Corinthians seven. I think it's verse three. Verse four. Five. five. Verse five, five. yeah. First Corinthians seven verse five. We say we see that same word that we're talking about here in point number three, where we have reason, but we have reasoning, but we have let passion overcome. Now, in the reality of life, and this is, of course, what we're doing our study for, the principle of self-denial or self-control deals with a reality of our life. And the Bible does not picture the Christian void, empty of all passion. The Bible doesn't picture us being drained of all of our desires. Nor does the Bible picture us being completely detached from temptation, immune to temptation. And we know that. We still have, you know, when we obey the gospel, I think this is one thing a lot of people have in mind, that, well, you know, when I obey the gospel, uh, life's going to become roses. Well, no. It'll become roses in some aspects. Sins will be forgiven. We'll have the opportunity and the privilege of praying to God, calling upon him as our father. So yes, in a lot of respects of those things, yes, the life of a Christian becomes better. But normally when they think about better, they're thinking better from the standpoint of uh, family problems, financial relationships, problems on the job, and those sort of things, health, health problems, all of those things I think are going to get better. But certainly we all know that becoming a Christian doesn't remove temptation from us. 
being a Christian doesn't automatically erase our desires. That's things we have to do. Those are things we have to work at. And one of those things that we have to work at that is a reality of life is to deny ourselves of all of those things. They're still going to be there. But we're going to have to deny ourselves. We're going to have to get dominion over ourselves, control. We're going to have to get power. We're going to have to exert strength over ourselves. Because now that we're a Christian, these sort of things haven't changed. We still live in a world that is controlled by the devil. He is the God of this world. So, instead, what the Bible shows is that all of the Christian's appetites and desires remain, but they're to keep them mastered. All of those appetites and desires, and when we talk about appetites, we're talking about fleshly desires, the desires that are contrary to God's will, or against God's will. All of those desires and all of those appetites, they have to be mastered. They have to be put under control. And so with self-control, man becomes the master and not the slave of his passions. Any questions before we get into the questions, comments, or be it? Okay, why does man have a problem mastering himself? Is it not because it requires a great deal of strength when it comes? Well, another way of, a way of looking at it is willpower. We have to have the will power. We have to have the will. Yeah. Too. So that's why it is a problem. As we said, it's one of those commands that we understand it. We know what it is, but it's hard to apply, especially in certain situations under certain circumstances. So let's go back and look at what were those three words or those expressions that suggested the idea of denying self? What were they? Deny self, self-control, and temperance. All right, let's look at them. What does deny himself mean? What was the meaning we gave to it? All right, to forget oneself, to lose sight of oneself, and of one's own interest. And remember, we added to that to be able to say no to ourselves. That's the hardest person to say no. So, you know, sometimes we think as parents, it's hard to tell our children no, and it is, it, it, it can be, but. It's even harder to say no to ourselves. I'm thinking about another thing that kind of makes it difficult in ways is everybody around us thinks there's no need for self control. Oh. They just, whatever. So you can see all this happening. And it's just. Uh, ah. And that adds to it, don't it? It adds to it. It does. We certainly live in a society where. For the most part, nobody's going to hold you responsible when you get out of control. I mean, we've seen the absolute ultimate of that here in, in recent times. No responsibility, no accountability. So that's another thing that adds to it being difficult to control ourselves when everybody and everything around us is not. And what's even harder is when as a Christian, we see other Christians 
You know, it's one thing to see a person of the world that's out of control. But really what can challenge us and discourage and weaken our faith and our resolve is when we see other Christians that are engaging in things that obviously is an indication of a lack of denial of themselves, a lack of self-control. What does temperance mean? What do we say it meant? Self-government. Governing self. If you don't, as a Christian, govern yourself, the job's not going to get done. That's, we had parents when we were children to govern us, but they, then we reached a point in our lives where we needed then to govern ourselves as we grew and become mature and adults. Well, as Christians, we need to have self-government, but we have God and his word that sets down the rules. Just like our parents set down the rules, we needed to follow those rules. As a Christian, God has set down the rules. We need to follow those rules. That's where self-government comes in. And not only that, but it's to be strong in a thing, be masterful, and we said that this word carries with it too, the idea of dominion, getting dominion, getting power, control, having the strength to control self. And then what do we define concerning the state of man that was known as perfect temperance? Talked about two things, reason and passion. What's the situation here with perfect temperance? All right. Perfect temperance is reason rules over passion. And we would all need to strive to reach that point where that reason always rules and wins over passion. What do we say about the state known as unbridled lust? Passion rules over reason. All right. That's where passion rules over reason. And that struggle, that battle that we're talking about is lost within us. What do we say about incont incontinence? What does that say about reason and passion. Okay. Reason is in there. <laughs> we know what we need to do. We know what we ought to do. But here's the situation. And here goes our feelings. Here goes our emotions. And we know how strong those are. We know how strong feelings are. We know how strong emotions are. And so we, I think, understand how it is that passion oftentimes rules out reasoning. Because we're talking about things here that, that, that mean a great deal with a lot of people. You know, there are a lot of people in, the, in this world that live their lives solely on the basis of their feelings. They feel they're saved. Well, when it comes to reason, they're not saved. And you can explain that to them. You can give them the reasoning as to why they're not saved. But guess what? Chances are they're not going to have it. Because they know how they feel. So when we talk about reason and passion, we're talking about some very powerful things. God's word is powerful, and certainly our reasoning from God's word ought to be just as powerful as his word is. 
but we're not dealing with the weakling over here either when we're dealing with feelings and emotions. So we can see the battle and how intense that battle can get. Then what about, in this case, where reason fights but passion prevails, the battle's on, but at the moment reason is losing. And what about self-control? Passion fights against reason, and which one prevails? In this case, reason. Reason prevails. And that is what we need to strive for. We're all in the battle. So, number nine, how does self-denial deal with life's reality? We still have all of these desires and temptations and feelings, we've not been stripped of them. But the right, we have to be the master. We have to become the master and not the slave of our passions. That's the only way we're ever going to deny self and what we need to learn, and this is the hard part of it, is to be consistent. That's, that's where many of us fail. Certain circumstances, certain situations, reason prevails. But then, every once in a while, here comes something along, and not that we don't know, that feelings win out. So are there any practical lessons that you can think of that we have learned from just our first study in this lesson? <clears throat> 